Welcome back. Let's get back to our payload creation. So, in the previous video, we saw how we can create a simple .txt trojan using MSF Venom. We used the basic options where we only set local host and local port. Now let's check out some other options that we have available. If I go and open up my terminal and run the command MSF Venom -h, we will get our help menu. And the purpose of all of these other options that we can see right here will usually be to either bypass an antivirus or to make your payload smaller in size or something similar to that. Basically, it is used for creating a payload for your own needs. For example, in the previous video, we created a payload that was a Windows Meterpreter shell as an .exe file. But we can create other file types if we want. To check out what other file types can we create, we can run the command msf venom dash dash list formats. And it tells us that right here under the dash f command. We can use dash dash list formats to list all of the available formats. So let's do that real quick. Dash dash list and then formats. This will take a few seconds to execute. And seeing this will be really useful. Why? Well, imagine you were sending a payload to a Linux machine. An .exe file wouldn't be much useful then, right? However, a Python file could be of use in that case. Well, MSF Venom allows us to create any file type that we want. So let's check out all of the available file types. So up here, we can see we can create ASP, DLL, .exe, some other file types as well. We can go down here, we can see different programming languages such as C, C Sharp. We can create in Perl, in PowerShell, in Python. We can also do Ruby, SH and many other file formats if we want. And what I also want to show you besides this is different options that are also useful whether it is for bypassing antivirus or changing the size of your payload. Let us check them out. So let's create a couple of payloads right now and compare them. Let me clear the screen first. And to compare them, we're going to use a site called Virus Total. And to do that, and to visit the site, we must open the Firefox. And what Virus Total is, is a website where you upload your viruses and they will tell you how many antivirus vendors are able to detect it as a malicious program. So if I open Virus Total by typing Virus Total right here, Go to the first link, which is this one, wirestotal.com. And one thing to keep in mind is that every file you upload to this website is sent to the antivirus vendors. So something that might be undetectable today, after uploading it to this website, it will for sure become detectable in a few days or a week. Are there other websites that don't send your files to antivirus vendors? Yes, but they are not as good as VirusTotal. And we already know that undetectable virus is a game of cat and mouse. Today it's undetectable, tomorrow it isn't. So this isn't really something to worry about right now. Let's create two payloads real fast. So the first one that we are going to create is going to be the one from the previous video. So let's do it real fast, we already know how to do that. It will be a 64-bit payload, meterpreter, reverse, TCP host will be equal to the IP address, so let's check it out real quick. Dot one dot twelve, and if I specify it right here, L port can be five 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 five. It doesn't really matter. The format will be exe, and the output we can save it as shell one dot exe. Press enter, and as soon as this finishes, we're going to upload this payload to the virus total to see how many antiviruses detect it as a malicious program. So it has finished, let us go to the VirusTotal website, click on choose a file, navigate to the desktop directory and select shell1.txe. I will double click it, I will confirm the upload and it will upload the shell for me. Now this scan will take a minute or two. So while that is doing, what we can do is we can create our second payload and to create the second payload we're going to use some additional options. So I will clear the screen right here and I will type msf venom-h 
right here. So we have the help menu available. Then I will go right here and run the command MSF Venom. We will use the same payload, which is Windows X64 Meterpreter slash reverse TCP. We will select the local host. 192.168.1.12 Local port will be 5555 After this we can use the dash A option to select the payload architecture as we can see right here dash A stands for the architecture to use for the payload So let's go and select x64 because in my case I'm attacking a Windows 10 64-bit machine If your Windows machine is 32-bit you can proceed with x86 Okay the next thing that we are going to use is a very interesting thing and that is an encoder. And what is an encoder? Well, let's go right here and find the dash E option which says right here the encoder and what we need to specify after it is the encoder that we want to use. Encoders can help us bypass some of the antiviruses. To list all of the encoders that we have, we can use dash dash list encoders. So let's do that first. So MSF Venom dash dash list and then encoders and here they are we get bunch of encoders for x86 or for 32-bit architecture we get some for the x64 or 64-bit architecture and we get some other encoders up here as well now the ones that we're interested in at the moment are these x64 ones so we're going to go with this one x64 slash Zuto underscore the Kiro. So let's copy its name right here and paste it after the dash E. Now if we go back to the help menu and go back to the encoder, another option that is closely linked to the encoder is this dash I option. And it is the amount of iterations. As it says in the description, this is the number of times to encode the payload. So if I go right here, after selecting the encoder, we want to select dash I to specify the number of iterations that we want to encode our payload. Now, the more iterations, the bigger the payload will be in size, but it also might mean that it will be less detectable to the antivirus vendors. So let's specify dash I and then let's perform 15 iterations, for example. After it, we're going to specify the platform on which the payload will run, which is Windows. And after it, we're going to use the dash N option and select 500. Now to see what this dash N option is, we can go right here. And in the dash N, we can see it is a knob sled. It will prepend a knob sled of length size onto the payload. Remember what a knob is? A knob is an instruction for the processor to not do anything. And here we are simply just telling how many knobs we want to add to our payload. Once we select a bunch of these options, we can add at the end dash F to be an EXE and dash O to be shell 2exe So this is our second shell. Let's run it and wait for MSF Venom to create our payload. And while it is creating the payload, let's go to the virus total and see how many detections we got with the regular meterpreter shell. So of 68 antiviruses, 43 detected this as a malicious program. And here we can see which ones detected it as a malicious program and which ones didn't. Hmm. Let's see whether we get any better result using the second shell. So we can see right here, it has been created, successfully add a knob sled of size 500 from x64 simple. The final size of the exe file is 8000 bytes. So let's go to virus total and remember this number 43 out of 68 and let's see whether we can at least bypass a little bit more antiviruses than from this first scan. Let's select the shell 2.exe, confirm the upload. Now, while this is scanning, let me tell you something real quick. With the MSF options, don't expect to get much better results once applying some additional options or something like that. As I already mentioned, the MSF Venom is a really known tool and everyone used these options to generate payloads, so they are very well known to all the antivirus vendors. Here we can see our second shell is scanning, and let's see whether we get a lower number than 43. 